Of course, Ken Pruitt dying over the weekend. Big news for us here at Bloomberg Surveillance. We've known about this for months. And Ken was very, very uh, ill. And uh, with me, our Michael McKee. This has been tough. It's particularly tough on you because you two were such a great team on Bloomberg Radio. I go in the room. I was so intimidated by that, that voice. And he's like, Mr. Tom, just be polite. Don't. I'll have a tantrum when you go in. And Ken didn't miss a beat. He had a gracious to him. That well, was great. People don't realize that you came to this as a beginner. Ken was the pro who had been doing it for years. And you started out. You struggled a little bit, and then they put Ken with you, and it just clicked. Well, we did. You know, we did Bloomberg on the economy, which you did uh, as well. And, of course, you had decades of experience going back to Reykjavik and Gorbachev. And here was this guy who was a radio guy back. I think he did the Civil War. I think he was <laughs> at Appomattox. And I walked into a guy that was totally a class act, totally gracious, and totally patient with me. He, and we would really get going. What's great about this, we hope to give you here for a couple of minutes, folks, some of the vignettes that, that we knew. Is, is he would keep it under, he was such a pro, he would keep his fury under guard, whether it was politics or dealing with me. Well, anybody who knew him knew that he was the ultimate gentleman. And not only was he a gentleman, he looked like a gentleman with his silver hair, his tall, proud bearing. Uh, he was the epitome of the Southern gentleman. Uh, I'm not going to say what side he probably would have been on had he been at Appomattox <laughs> since he grew up in North Carolina. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know which side he would have been on, but, you know, it was a civil war between us. And, uh, you know, as I've said many times, it was almost like a marriage where Ken got the love notes and I got the hate mail. But within all this was the craft that he brought to it so different from what you do or I do. He, he didn't do economics like Michael McKee. He wasn't the sophisticated of the moment. It was very common man. Yes. And the thing about Ken, though, was he knew what he was talking about. He had done business news for years, but he didn't get into the minutia. He remembered the viewer. He remembered the listener, the person who mm -hmm. didn't know as much as you two knew. And he was always after you and after me to explain to people what was going on. You know, I, I, I look at, uh, the, you know, Brad Hintz or someone at Sanford Bernstein or any of the other people uh, that we would interview. And what would drive me nuts is I'd be going blah, blah, you six, you know, rate of return, first derivative. And they're turning to Ken going, Ken, ask me something in English, please. <laughs> <laughs> that they could understand. I've talked to a lot of people who knew him over the last couple of weeks yeah. and the universally praise coming on with him. They love to talk to him because he would bring out the best in them without getting into too much into the weeds. He would allow them to explain what people needed to know in order to understand what yeah. they were talking about. It, but if he, if he didn't have his morning coffee, he was surly. <laughs> I mean, he needed within the grind that we do here. And, of course, you're doing Bloomberg First Word now on radio and, you know, we, we do surveillance. But the grind of it, he literally taught me better how to do three or four or five hours straight. He taught you how to take a nap. Yeah, I mean, he but, would go nuts that I didn't take. He would be Wednesdays, he'd be, Tom, you gotta stop doing that, you need a damn nap. <laughs> well, he would go home and take a nap and then he would uh, get out and do some of the, the things he loved to do. He loved to get out to the country, he had a place up in the mountains, yeah. and he loved to go fishing. And some of my favorite stories from Ken were about fishing and uh, the time he spent on the rivers and lakes. Yeah, he would go and of course he had stock lines that would bore us with to death, but one of them, which you you did uh, with him as well as to go out to Wyoming and, as, as he would say, look for a trout the size of your leg. And, <laughs> and, but he really did. It. I mean, he was the real deal when it came to fishing. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, uh, he was actually kind of a quiet, <clears throat> small town boy who made his career in the big city and did it so very, very well. You know, Ken Pruitt, uh, passing away here after a long illness, I regard. So thank you. To Three, two, one. Where's the surveillance Kleenex? Here it is. Thank you to all of you for your uh, many comments. Mike, get me through this, please. All right. Let's, well, Tom, we got to say goodbye to Ken and thanks to Ken for everything he contributed to us and to making our yes. careers what they are today. And we wish the best to his wife, Faye.